Hi everyone, my name is Barbara Hurst and I will be doing my presentation on famous American ethologist, eugenists, primatologists, and most importantly, psychologist, Robert Mearing Jerkis. Let's get started. Robert Jerkis was born on May 26, 1876, on a town called Northampton Township in the state of Pennsylvania. He later grew up in a city called Bradysville, Pennsylvania. He attended Yersinus College, in which, fun fact, he was actually studying medicine and biology instead of psychology. He later got offered a spot doing graduate work in biology at Harvard University. It was then when he began to take an interest in animal behavior and began to study comparative psychology and later got his PhD in psychology. He he later started as an instructor at Harvard and got promoted to assistant professor of comparative psychology. On the previous slide, I talked about his time at Harvard, in which he, during that time, wrote a book called Great Apes with the assistant of his wife, Ada Jerkis. He wrote many different books during his lifetime, 15 to be exact, but some of his most famous books are his first book, which is Dancing Mouse, which helped establish the use of mice as laboratory subjects in the psychological testing field, and Great Apes, which was the book that he wrote with the assistant of his wife, which consisted of his personal observations in the study of higher apes like chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans. One of his most famous work is the Yerkes Dodson Law, relating motivation and habit to which he worked alongside psychologist John D. Dodson. This law states that performance increases with arousal, but only up to a certain point. When arousal levels become too high, performance actually decreases. Like for example, when performing a simple task at home, like doing dishes, laundry, or anything else, you will be less likely to be affected by arousal due to the fact that you are doing something that you do on a daily basis and it will not be affected. However, while performing something a more something like more challenging tasks are also levels tend to increase and affect you. One of the best examples of this is moments before taking a test where, where you either feel like you studied enough and you'll be fine or you are super anxious and can't remember a single word that you read about or studied. He had many recognitions during his lifetime. For example, he was a principal developer of comparative and animal psychology in the U.S. His knowledge about primates made him the world's foremost authority on the great apes. He established the Yale Laboratories of Primate Biology, later renamed after him the Jerkis Laboratories of Primate Biology. But he was not only interested in primates. There was a time of his life where he also was interested in psychological testing in humans. In 1917, he was elected president of the American Psychological Association. After the U.S. entered World War I, he encouraged the APA to get involved in contributing to the military. They designed a way to measure intelligence in order to identify Army recruits who were particularly suited for special positions. This work led to the Food testing that the army used, which are the alpha test and the beta test. The alpha test, which was a test that was given to the illiterate soldiers and tested the ability to follow directions, arith arithmetic, and analogies. And the army, the army beta test, which was given to the illiterate with pictures or symbols to test things like identification and picture completion. Tell you some of the fun facts in which I mentioned during the whole presentation, and it is all done from here. I hope that you enjoyed my presentation and you learned some of the or something about the origins of animal psychology. Thank you.